Can one person have either a negative or a positive effect on an entire industry? Stick around for something that I am calling the Huff Effect. Here we go. And hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you coming in to see this particular video. Now, before we get going, I feel that it's important uh, to put a disclaimer out there that this is in no way a hate video. It's not a debunking video. It's not a slandering video. It, it's nothing like that at all. I am aware that there's gonna be a variety of people who are gonna see this video and, sorry, Buddy is coming in right now. I understand that there's going to be a variety of people who are going to watch this video to see if I say anything negative or if I say anything positive. The fact is, it's neither. Allow me to explain. As a content creator, it is important for us to be able to go onto YouTube and see what other people are doing. Right now, uh, today as a matter of fact, it is cloudy out, it's rainy out, the wind is blowing, and so today is actually a perfect day for me to just sit down watch YouTube and just see who's doing what and what all is going on. Now in doing this, I saw a video by Steve Huff that I'm sure many of you have also seen. Uh, in this video, he states that he's going to be pulling away from his uh, Patreon and from his group sessions, private sessions, and that he's probably going to take a hiatus of a minimum of six months off. Um, as he continues on throughout this video, he talks about a variety of issues and problems that he has had on YouTube and, you know, including being shadow banned. And it really got me to thinking about my own journey that I have had with Steve and I thought perhaps I could share my perspective of this particular story in hopes that maybe it can explain what I think has happened. To do so, I'm gonna to have to go back 23 years. As with many people, including Mr. Huff, I had a variety of experiences ever since I was a child. And I am not unique to this. There are several people who have had childhood paranormal type experiences. And I was scared of this. As I got older, I wanted to explore it a little bit more, and I learned about EVPs. So I went off and I bought a Marantz tape recorder. And this is a sidebar real quick, guys. If you by chance happen to find a Marantz recorder on eBay or OfferUp, grab it. They are fantastic recorders. And so I started using uh, this recorder as my main source of, of EVP recording. And as like most people, I eventually moved on to the PSB7 uh, scanning radio. And I still enjoy a really good PSB7 session if they are really sincere sessions. Is there anybody in this house? Are there... I was wanting to learn how to or, or find a way that I could possibly improve the sound of the scanning radio because if you've ever used a scanning radio there is the the scanning sound that you will hear as it's going through the different stations in my research this is when i found huff paranormal now keep in mind this was during a time when he was still using the psb7 and he had just built his portal device the very first portal device and you know, I found him to be open, I found him to be honest, I found him to be um, uh, sincere and transparent and kind, and it was, it was a stark difference from what I had seen of Ghost Adventures and Zach Bagans and the yelling and screaming and, and all that nonsense. And to top it off, uh, uh, Steve was a guitarist, I was a drummer, he's a photographer, I'm a photographer, and he showed people how to build a portal device if they wanted to. And so I thought I had a lot in common with him, so I subscribed. Uh, now, he was also building portal devices for those who wanted one. The price tag started, if I remember right, right around $2,000. 
there was no way I was going to spend 2000 bucks on a guitar amplifier and two effects pedals, so I set out to design my own, because I wanted one that was specific to me, that was lightweight, that was portable, uh, because the portal, you still had to plug it in, and it, it was pretty heavy. So you couldn't really take it around anywhere, and I wanted the ability to be mobile. And for those of you who have been with me for a while, you might remember the Angel Phone. That was the very first device that I had built. Thank you for that. Who is with me right now? Miss, I heard you. You were faint, but I heard you. When I hear that music, when I hear that singing, are those angels? Do you guys have any messages that you want to pass on? Anything that you want to But I want to make this very, very abundantly clear that I would not have built that device had I not seen Steve's channel and had that inspiration. So I do want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, as time went on, uh, he would go on to develop more devices uh, he started using apps, and he didn't seem as transparent as before, but there were still no major red flags that were going off at this particular time. Uh, I myself started, started to become aggravated and frustrated because I was not getting the level of responses that he was getting through his sessions, and I really started to doubt my abilities to even to even do this to be able to do any type of spirit investigation or communication uh, because the responses that I was getting was just vastly different uh, and then one day he came out with a video that claimed that spirit said that he was the chosen one and that didn't sit right with me um, I felt as if he was elevating himself above everyone else uh, even more so than those who were doing this work and trying to do so from an honest point of view. And by him saying that he was the chosen one, it, I felt as if it made all of the rest of us obsolete. And um, again, that's, that's, that's how I, I felt about the situation at the time. And as a result, I started to back away a little bit from the channel. I was still kind of observant of what was going on, but I wasn't really... My level of enthusiasm had been knocked down. I kind of felt like I had been sucker punched. Even though he and I never spoke, we didn't know each other, I, I felt like I had been sucker punched a little bit by someone who was being highly regarded for what he was doing. After that, he started to do more celebrity sessions, and then he started to delve into these doomsday videos, these end of day videos. And I was troubled by that because it went against his brand. In other words, it went against what he had been saying all up until this point about, about love and being hopeful and, and light. And I just thought, this isn't the same guy that I knew a few years back. And um, I started to get this thought in my head, you know, because the news channels were doing the same thing. I started to get this thought in my head of, well, negative news gets views. And I thought, eh, eh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about this. And so after a little bit of time, I, I just stepped away. And I felt the person that I had respected and in some ways was inspired by was gone. And then some time went by and then Cody ITC came out uh, with a video outing Steve Huff. 
needless to say, I have my own issues with Cody ITC. I think he's a great um, marketer. I think he's great at utilizing the YouTube algorithm, and that's about it. Uh, but then Steve made a counter video, and I agreed actually with much of what he had said in that video. In fact, I even emailed Steve uh, in support, and we had, we had a very friendly back and forth. It wasn't many emails, but we did have a friendly back and forth. And uh, in his video, he had stated that he was going to become more transparent because he felt that it was needed for those of us who were truly doing things in the paranormal uh, world that we needed to share our information. And I thought, great, he's back. And he started off great. Uh, after that, he, he had developed a new device, and for the most part, he had shown everyone how it worked and was fairly transparent helps spirit with it. Gives them time to manipulate the audio. So, if you're feeding in an interview, you have your noise reduction pedal, you have your delay, and then you have your reverb. Have your dele delay set for three to five seconds, have your noise pedal like I do here blocking the sound. It was fairly transparent with it. And then slowly I noticed that it seemed that he was starting to go back just a little bit more. As a matter of fact, he had built another device uh, shortly after that one and was completely secretive about it. But now we can scientifically prove without a shadow of a doubt that spirits are manipulating the audio to speak. I am feeding pure gibberish as I test my miracle box. The box isn't done yet. It's going to be three to four more weeks. That's why it's not being shown. And so I thought, uh, here we go again. And so I pulled away again. I noticed that after that, he started to do more celebrity sessions and then started to tiptoe into the world of... Uh, Indian actors who had passed and while these videos did increase his views I noticed just an onslaught of backlash from the Indian community at large uh, in regards to these videos and unfortunately many of these videos had some pretty compelling evidence uh, to support their claims and um, and I thought, oh, wow, is this going to be the beginning of the end? In his video, Steve had mentioned that as a result of those particular videos, uh, that he had been shadow banned from YouTube. Now, I, I, wanna, I, I, I feel the need to address that because YouTube does not necessarily shadow ban channels or content creators. What they will do is if a particular channel has had a variety of complaints against it, if there has been a variety of uh, negative, you know, thumbs down to a video, YouTube will address that. And what they will do is they, they will keep your videos up, they'll keep your channel up, they just won't promote your videos as much. Uh, your, your subscribers will still see the videos people who are notified on your channel they will still see the videos they just won't promote the videos because a large amount of negative complaints uh, towards a channel a creator or specific videos so that's what I believe has happened I don't believe that it was necessarily a shadow ban I think it was YouTube sticking with their own rules and guidelines that everybody is made aware of and in a lot of cases YouTube will contact that creator let them know what's going on and give them a chance to reply give them a chance to um, counteract or even just remove the video overall so that you don't get that strike um, so the fact that he was still getting views on these videos it tells me that yeah it was just YouTube sticking to their own guidelines but what we saw was that his content was no longer getting the 1 million views the 700,000 views we had seen as a result of those videos and then he had a video where um, 
his bedroom dresser drawers were opening and closing, especially that video, we noticed that there was a decline in his views. He was getting on average 25 to 30,000 views compared to the million. And in a lot of cases, he was getting less than the, the 20 to 30,000 views. So since then, he has created another channel with the promise of not doing celebrities on this particular channel. The channel, uh, I believe, is right around 1,300 subscribers, and the average video gets 1,000 views or less, which that should paint an overall picture as to what has happened. And again, I'm not saying this to be vindictive. I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is, is paint a timeline of things that have happened that I noticed and this is only my thought process as to what I think has happened within that channel. Now and I also want to say that I don't know really of many content creators that get 100% of views from all of their subscribers because you do have old subscribers you have people who don't get notifications and there's people who just forget about you so I mean so there is some leeway there but to go from a million views to 20,000 views that's 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 a big a big jump and um, and I do appreciate the fact that he has created this this uh, channel that doesn't rely on celebrity sessions we'll have to see what happens uh, going forward with that when he first started on YouTube I fully believe that he had the best of intentions I truly do I believe that um, that the reason that he got into it was the, was for the reasons that he said that his father had passed and that he was trying to reach out. So I believe that that is sincere. I don't think that he expected his channel to blow up the way that it did because it did blow up because there was nobody really at the time that was doing what he was doing. So the channel exploded and I don't think he was ready for that. And I think what he tried to do was try to keep up with the demand and make content that people wanted to see. It's kind of like M. Night Shyamalan, you know, he, um, he, he made Sixth Sense and he knocked it out of the park. Then what can you do after that? What can you do once you've already done your best? I think there was kind of a similar situation going on here. And, and one thing that he had always mentioned was that he wasn't doing any of this for for the money and when I first heard that I really respected that in this video that he, he, he mentioned it again but I was troubled this time only because he had mentioned a few times that he had lost income as a result at the end of this year I will close out the members areas that uh, pertain to group sessions and I will be losing all of that income but it's something that I have to do of of what has been happening and then shortly after that urged people to get their sessions in while they can because he'll be closing down the session portions of um, of his channel and that didn't sit right with me only because when you work in marketing you you do try to create a sense of urgency for people to buy and so there's that part of me that that's disturbed by that and there's another part of me that that is thinking well hopefully this isn't the case hopefully you know he's actually being sincere and giving everyone a chance to do what they want to do do what they need to do before he closes down but it was just coincidental to me that he said that he was losing income and if you want to do it do it now basically is the takeaway that I got from it now I am not saying that people shouldn't make a living off of YouTube I support anybody who makes a living on YouTube I think it's a phenomenal way I wanted to make this video because he seemed a little unsure a little taken aback as to why things have turned out with his channel the way that it has and I 
felt it important that somebody who was a devout follower who had subscribed why they would back off why why, why they would unsubscribe and why they would no longer follow uh, there's a gentleman out who he's been out in the field for a while now and and I actually like him I respect him his name is Steve Huff he has come up with a variety of things including an app based off of his real world box called the portal um, as someone who is in this field and has been for a few decades you know, you always look for people that you can learn from. You look for for new things to, to help you in this. And I'm not going to say that I didn't find that, because I did at first. But then the warning signs, for me, I'm only saying for me, started to kick in. But the main reason, I think, why I stepped away, away and why many others stepped away is because of disappointment in someone that you once trusted. It, it hurts. So hopefully that paints an overall picture as to why some people may have stepped away, some of the things that they may have seen that caused them to step away. I wish Mr. Huff the absolute best, and, and, and that's sincere, going forward. And I hope that all of this gives him an opportunity to think and reflect on a variety of things. Um, I know that many will have opinions on this, and, and I'm fine with opinions. I'm fine with feedback. Uh, as always, I welcome comments, but hate speech won't be allowed. Uh, I'm not going to argue the point, but I will respond to respectful disagreements. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please post them down in the comment section below, and I will just see you next time. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye.